While many South Africans flock north, Scotland centre Hugh Jones did the exact opposite. He didn't get a spot at an academy after going to school in Kent, took a gap year in Cape Town and joined the local rugby club. Within three years, he was playing super rugby and got a call up to Scotland. Is there something in the water in Cape Town or does he just have the secret to rugby success? I'm here in Guildford to get the answers. Hugh Jones, um, it's lovely to meet, um, what is this, the second most important person in your household? Uh, yeah, precisely. This is Louis. Um, he is he's probably the most important, I'd say. I'll is get it? in trouble for that. But um, he runs the household. He, so he does what he wants. Your fiancé also let him get away with murder? Well, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, there we go, Louis. So you have followed an unusual path to becoming a pro rugby player. If we spoke to you in your final year at school, yeah. What would you have said about what you want to be in three years' time? Um, I think I wouldn't have had a clue, firstly. Um, I didn't really have plans, but I, I've always, I wanted to be a rugby player. Um, I just think at that point it wasn't realistic for me. Um, and why, so Why not? I th well, at a young age, I didn't play any age group rugby, so I didn't play sort of under 16s or under 18s representative. Um, I played for my school, which was a good rugby school and I wasn't called straight into an academy. And I, I didn't want to go to university straight away, so I wanted to take a gap year, and South Africa was the first choice. Um, my uncle knew uh, he had a contact at Bishop's School in Cape Town, uh, so I called them up, applied for a job as a stooge, I think they call it, um, and I got it. So I was uh, straight down to Cape Town after I left school. Um, so as soon as I got there, there was one of the teachers at the school um, signed me up straight away to False Bay Rugby Club and I loved it. So you played what? Club rugby and then how long did it take you to play Varsity Cup rugby? Um, so I would have started at False Bay in 2012 um, and then I played Varsity Cup in 2014. So the year in between, so I played for the under 20s uh, and then the next year I was too old um, and I played actually in the Cape Town 10s as a sort of trial um for the senior side at false bay um i managed to say sober most of the weekend which was a big achievement this is impressive i didn't manage that the next few years but <laughs> uh, but i wasn't playing those years so it's fine um but yeah we we actually did quite well uh i think we got to the plate final or something we won that um and our head coach was a guy called kevin musikant who then got the job at uct and kind of just brought me with him which was nice of him to do What's the cultural leap like when you jump from Varsity Cup, which is still amateur, some people would say semi-pro, into the likes of the Stormers? It was a big jump, mostly in terms of the training. I remember my first sort of back skill session, I got cramp in my hands from the amount we had been passing. Um, but it's those sorts of things that you then get used to. And it's um, as coming from a very sort of amateur lifestyle uh, into a professional lifestyle. Um, it's a big shock at first, but, but I, I felt that I got used to it pretty quickly um, and, it, and it really helped me out. And you were filling some pretty big boots. Yeah, so uh, Jean de Villiers had just got injured. Uh, I think he'd injured his jaw. Um, so he was out of that season, which gave me an opportunity. Um, so I joined the pre-season and then uh, I didn't get much time on, on the field. I was sort of getting... I think some games I got the last play, uh, some games I'd get up to five minutes. Um, so I didn't play a lot, but just having that experience, sort of being around um, those players, I think it was Joanne de Jong and Damien Dielendi who were playing in the centre at the time. And, and they were obviously at that point brilliant and have gone on to do even better things in their careers. So uh, it was just really exciting for me to just be involved with these kind of players, something that I hadn't foreseen coming out to South Africa. Um, but I was just sort of really happy to be there. Yeah, in three years you'd gone from working at a school making sure some borders were up in the morning yeah. to travelling to Christchurch. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Um, so that was my first sort of Super Rugby tour. Uh, we went out to New Zealand um, and then I think during the week Joanne Dion got injured. Um, I don't know how hesitant they were to put me in, but I started the game uh, against the Hurricanes. Oh. Um, and I, I, I was up against Mar Nonu and Conrad Smith in the centres, guys that I'd idolised and watched even the year before, um, thinking how amazing they were. 
Um, and then before I knew it, I was standing opposite them. Um, yeah, trying to tackle them. So <laughs> yeah, that was actually towards the end of the season. So it kind of um, went from there. And then I managed to get quite a good bit of game time in the in the Curry Cup, which was nice because um, obviously the Springboks go away. They get ready for the, the Rugby Championship. So guys like me who had struggled for game time, um, get a bit of confidence playing in the Curry Cup. And the culture, I mean, a lot of South African rugby spaces are still very Afrikaans and you're in the middle of all of that kind of... Did you ever find yourself looking left and right going? Oh, I certainly did. My first season, um, the meetings were in Afrikaans. <laughs> so I didn't have a clue what was going on. Uh, there was me and an Argentinian guy at the club, um, Manuel Caritza, and we'd just sit at the back of the meetings not knowing what the game plan was for the weekend. Um, and this was like vital information that we needed to know that we didn't have a clue what was going on. But um, no, they got the message across to us eventually and, and I had to learn. I didn't learn Afrikaans, but I learned sort of words that you can say on the field um, in order to get the ball in your hands. Come on, um, give it to us. Oh, I've forgotten most of it now. Most of it's just rugby calls, but I just remember scop is kick. Um, <laughs> Scop, scop it. Um, so that's all I really knew. How did you manage to find your way back to Scotland all the way from Cape Town? It was the Glasgow Warriors analyst at the time, a guy called Gav Vaughan. Um, he was up late watching University Rugby um, for no reason other than he had run out of Premiership and European games to watch. He saw sort of next to my name, there was a Scotland flag. I was born in Edinburgh uh, and he was immediately like jackpot. So. He got in contact with me. I actually got offered to go to Glasgow that year, um, but I was just loving Cape Town too much. And it was in 2016, I think they got in contact with me again. Uh, but at that point, I'd played a bit for the Stormers and it was the Scotland coach this time, uh, Vern Cotter, that called me up and said, do you want to play for Scotland? Uh, and I, I didn't know what to say, but I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. Um, what did you say? Well, I didn't say anything for about five seconds because I couldn't believe it. But then I said, yes, yes, please. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so that was it. I went on the summer tour with Scotland to Japan. I'd watched the year before the World Cup. Um, and I was like, oh, imagine playing international rugby. That would be crazy. And then the, the next year I get a call out of the blue, um, completely out of nowhere um, to play for Scotland. Um, so yeah, it was incredible. That is insane. Yeah. Do you still sometimes look at that and go, uh, I went from playing varsity rugby to playing for Scotland in what? What was that? Two years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's mad. Um, I still can't quite believe it. What's been your highlight in a Scotland jersey? Um, I've had a few. I think my debut was incredible uh, just to make my debut. Um, and then in the next couple of years, I had sort of big games against New Zealand, which we unfortunately lost. Um, a couple of good wins against Australia. Uh, I think the best one would be um, beating England in 2018 at home at Murrayfield. Um, that was an incredible occasion. And I also scored uh, a couple of tries, which obviously was the icing on the cake. So. Yeah, that was an in incredible game. Really enjoyed that um, and, a, and a really good win as well. So that would be my highlight. What does the future look like now? So I'm heading back to Glasgow. Um, I've been sort of out of the mix with Scotland the last couple of years. So I think a big thing for me uh, with this move is to try and get back in there. Um, I missed out on the last World Cup. So I'd absolutely love to go to the next one next season. Um, yeah, I think I'm getting married in the summer, so I'll be a married man when I arrive in Glasgow. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the immediate future. I think in terms of my rugby career, I, th I, I wouldn't change a thing. It's gone, it's gone well for me. Um, I've had some in incredible opportunities. Um, I'd like to continue playing for as long as possible, ideally. Um, I've loved my time at Quinns this season. It's been incredible. Um, but I think, yeah, move back to Glasgow, try to get back in the Scotland squad. That's my, that's my aim for the next two seasons.